course. Do you want to do a scene with Bruce? Okay. Don't say okay to me. I'm asking you yeah, if you yeah, want. Yeah, it was yeah, your yeah. idea. I wouldn't have suggested it. Yeah, let's do the one at his apartment, except for Bob in that one. Wait. I can read Bob. I read both parts. You just have to worry about your part. Okay, that'd be fun. Or... Oh. Hello again. Hello. Odd coincidence. Yes. Are you answering that again? Well, yes I am. Me too. I mean, I put one in again. Yes, well, I think I'll, I'll wait over there. I'm afraid, uh... Oh, excuse me. Uh... Yes? I'm afraid it's crossed my mind that you answer my aunt again. I would not be so stupid as to answer the same ad twice. Well, I was hoping to get a different sort of person. Wait, you forgot to say I changed my ad. I changed my ad. I was hoping to get a different sort of person. Are you then the Pulitzer Prize winning author 6'5", like Kierkegaard, Mahler, and Joan Didion? Yes, I am. Sorry. I see. Well, that was a ludicrous list of people to, like, anyway, it serves me right. Don't weird. push. Just talk to me. It serves me right. I feel very embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. We're all human. You should be in therapy. That's my line. Um, I see no reason not to be embarrassed at being human. You should be in therapy. I am in therapy. Hasn't worked. Thank you very much. Do you think we're the only two people who answer these ads? I doubt it. Maybe we're faded. Jinx seems more like it. I think you're unlucky, don't you? In general, I mean. You're going to sit down, are you? What else should I do? Go home to Bob? Oh, yes. Who, who's Bob? Well, how is Bob? He's kind of grumpy these days. Perhaps he's getting his period. I don't know much about menstruation. Tell me about it. Yes, I do think I'm unlucky. What? In answer to your question, I mean, I am attractive, aren't I? I mean, without being conceited, I know I'm fairly attractive. I mean, I'm not within the word world 2% mutants. I don't think you're mutant at all. I mean, I think you're very attractive. Yes, well, I don't know if I can really credit your opinion. You're sort of a crackpot, aren't you? You really don't like me, do you? I don't know you, really. Uh, well, no, I probably don't like you. Well, I don't like you either. Well, fine. It was delightful to see you again. Goodbye. I really hate it when you cry. You're much too large to cry. Sorry it's not you. Something was just coming up from me. My some childhood something. Yes, I miss childhood. Thought you were leaving. <sighs> All right. I want to ask you something. Why did you put that ad in that paper? I mean, if you're living with a person named Bob, why are you trying to meet a woman? I want to be open to all experiences. Well, that sounds all very well, but surely you can't just turn on and off sexual preference. I don't have to turn it on and off. I prefer both sexes. I don't know. I find that so difficult to believe. But well, why would I be here with you if I wasn't interested in you? You might be trying to murder me or punish your mother. Or I might be trying to reach out and touch someone. That's a slogan of Coke or Dr. Pepper, I think. The telephone company, actually. But it's a good <laughs> slogan. I mean, isn't that what we're all trying to do? Reach out to another person? I mean, we put an ad in the paper after the one you answered it. I know. It's very hard to meet people. I mean, I do meet people at the magazine. I met Sean Cassidy last week. Of course, he's too young for me. Bob really likes Sean Cassidy. Oh, I'll have to try to set them up. I don't think your therapist is helping you at all. Oh, well, I think yours must be a maniac. My therapist says you must be willing to go out on a limb to risk. To risk. My therapist says I have to settle for imper imperfection. <laughs> uh -huh.
I know it's unconventional to be bisexual. My wife Sally didn't deal with it well at all. You were married? For six years I married this girl Sally. I knew all through grammar school and high school and everything. She was running off for the homecoming queen. I didn't go to the prom. I read notes from the underground instead. You should have gone to the prom. I don't like proms. Why did you and Sally break up? Well, I didn't understand about bisexuality. I thought the fact that I wanted to sleep with the man who came to read the gas meter. I thought the fact that I wanted to sleep with the man who read the gas meter. I was queer. I thought the fact that I wanted to sleep with the man who came to read the gas meter meant I was queer. I'm never home when, I'm, when they come to read that gas meter. And so then Sally found out I was sleeping with the gas meter. She got really angry. We got a divorce. Well, I guess if you're homecoming queen runner up, you don't expect those sort of problems. You haven't been married, have you? No. Have there been any, uh, anyone, uh, serious? I have two cats. <sighs> serious? Let's see. Well, about a year and a half ago, I lived with, for six months with this aging preppy named Michael. I'm an aging preppy. <laughs> yes, I know. Michael was a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> And he was very smart and very nice, and I shouldn't, I should have been happy with him, and I don't know why I wasn't, and he was slightly allergic to my cats, so I broke it off. You haven't gone out with anyone since? Well, I do go out with people, but it never seems to work out. Maybe you're too hard on them. Well, should I pretend someone is wonderful if I think they're stupid or crazy? Well, no, but maybe you judge everyone too quickly. Well, perhaps. But how many nights would you give David Berkowitz? You know, David Berkowitz? No, it was a rhetorical question. You must ask yourself what you want. Do you want to be married? I have no idea. It's so confusing. I know when I was a little girl, a million dollar movie showed this film called Every Girl Should Be Married. Every night for seven days. It was a stunt comedy about this infantile girl played by Betsy Drake who wants to be married to this pediatrician played by Cary Grant who sees who she sees in a drugstore. She sees him for two minutes but she wants to move in and have babies with him. And he finds her totally obnoxious. But then at the end of the movie suddenly says, you're right, you're adorable and they then they get married. Well, it's a comedy. And what confused me further was that the, actrix, the actress Betsy Drake did in fact marry Cary Grant in real life. Of course, it didn't last, and he married several other people, and then later Diane Cannon said it was insane, and t he was insane, and took LSD, and so maybe one wouldn't want to be married to him at all. But if it's no good being married to Cary Grant, who is it good being married to? I don't know. Neither do I. Well, you should give things time. First impressions can be wrong. Maybe Diane Cannon was the problem. Maybe anyone married to her would take LSD. Maybe Cary Grant is still terrific. Maybe he's too old for me anyway. Sean Cassidy's too young, and Cary Grant's too old. I'm the right age. Yes, I guess you are. And you haven't left. You said you were leaving, but then you stayed. Well, it's not particularly meaningful. I was just curious why you put the ad in the paper. Why did you answer? I don't wish to analyze my behavior on the issue. So afraid of things. I feel this overwhelming urge to help you. We can look into the abyss together. Please don't say pretentious things. I get a rash. You're right. I get Sam pretentious. Well, I really am too hard on people. No, you're probably right to dislike me. Sally hates me. And sometimes I hear myself and I understand why no one likes me. Please don't be so hard on yourself on my account. Everyone's stupid, so you're just like everyone else. I'm sorry. That sounded terrible. I'm stupid too. We're all stupid. It's human to be stupid. There's a somebody I'm longing da 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 Oh, I didn't realize you were stopping. Sorry, I didn't realize you were starting. Yeah, stupid of me to like that song. It's a pretty song. Well, I guess it is. I want to say something. I like you. You do? I like women who are independent minded who don't look to a man to do all the things you can have. I like women who are persons. Well, you sound like you were coached by Betty Friedan. Free Dan. Free Dan. Free Dan. Free Dan. Free Dan. She's a one of the original feminists, Betty Free Dan. Oh, okay. Well, how, why don't I know that? That's something between you and your maker. Which is myself. But otherwise... Your maker is God. God. 
out of me. <laughs> in a weird way. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. But otherwise, that's a nice sentiment. Of course, a woman who was independent-minded won't like the song someone to watch over me. You have to love the contradiction in yourself. Nobody's just one thing. <sighs> that is very true. That wasn't a crackpot comment at all. I know it wasn't. Just because I'm a crackpot on something doesn't mean I'm a total crackpot. Right. You're a partial crackpot. <laughs> you could be a crackpot, too, if you let yourself go. That wasn't what I was attempting to do when I got up this morning. To risk. To risk. Do you like me? Well, I don't know. I don't really know you yet. Do you want to get to know me? <sighs> well, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't. I mean, we did meet through a personal ad. You don't have a Pulitzer Prize. I am a membership of the New York Health and Racket Club. Well, similar, but not the same thing. As a member, I can get you a discount. I don't know if I'm ready to exercise yet. I'm thinking about it. But I'm cautious still. We're getting on, aren't we? Well, yes, in a way. <laughs> Do you think maybe they don't have waiters in this restaurant? Maybe they're on strike. Why don't we go to another restaurant? I know a good Mexican one. I don't like Mexican food. I'm afraid. I don't like Mexican food, I'm afraid. Oh. Japanese? Well, no. Chinese? Well, more than Japanese, but not really. Where do you want to go? Well, can you go to an American restaurant? I know I'm very dull, but I didn't even like vanilla ice cream when I was a child. I was afraid of it. That's a significant statement you've just made. It does sound pathological, doesn't it? Don't be afraid to sound pathological. That's what I've learned from my therapy so far. I don't think I've learned much from my therapy. Maybe I can help you. We can look into the abyss together. That's right, you don't like when I said that before. That's all right. I'll look into the abyss for one evening. For one evening. Oh, you're becoming more open. Good for you. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Uh, I'm sorry? Oh, my therapist <laughs> barked for encouragement. Uh, of course. Tell me about your fear of vanilla ice cream. Well, I had gotten very used to baby food, and um, I also liked junket, but there was something about the texture of vanilla ice cream that... Do you remember junket? What is junket? Junket was, a, it was called junket rennet custard. No, it was I a was type not. of custard. Oh. It was called junket. Isn't that weird? It's custard? Isn't that a bad name for a product? I thought it was junk food. I thought she meant... Junket I don't think is... Uh, I, was, I think it's beyond, before my generation. Yeah, before beyond before. therapy. That's what they call it. I think it was before that, yeah. Yeah, good I was born in 69. You were? 60 years old? You 30? When's your birthday? April 3rd. And you'll be 40? April 3rd? Oh, God. Those Next. I hope you're two o'clock late. Don't worry, I, I'm going to owe you the time. Okay. I'll give it to you on April 3rd. I wish, like... I could just get an agent and get a job and be happy and work So does gender. everybody. Okay. How about you? Let me get forget. What? Okay, here we go. Michael, talk about a blast from the past. <sighs> Looking good as always. Mike, are you alright? Sandy, um, Lola was murdered last night. Someone murdered her. Oh my god. Where? How? Who was she? Where was she? Top of Mulholland. Oh Mike, are you alright? Hanging on, but Sandy gives the thing. Someone called me last night pretending to be her. What? A woman sounded like her and talked me into meeting her. Someone wanted me to find her body. Oh my god. You know anyone who wanted her dead? No, not really. When was the last time you saw her? Uh, I don't know. I think she was at Screw on Saturday night. Where? Club Screw. You don't know it? Since we broke up, I don't really get out much anymore. No, it's Ricky Stewart's club on Sunset. She's been performing there a lot. Sandy, was Lola still using? Yeah, not too much, but you know her. She always felt it helped her on stage to have a little, you know, boost. <sighs> what about you? You and, uh... Mr. Daniel still on first name basis? One day at a time, like always, things are to the best. Here he's going to give me a call. Take care of yourself. <laughs> so cheesy. <laughs> That's right. That's why I need you to make it less cheesy. <laughs> if it was brilliant, I can get anybody, or I can just Xerox it and hand it out to the audience. It was pretty good, but if it's cheesy,